This lecture is part of a Udemy course entitled Design of Wastewater Treatment Plants for On-Site Projects. You will learn how to fully design a treatment plant for small to medium scale projects. You can find an 80% discount promo link in the description box. Hello everyone and welcome to this new lecture that will be about the anaerobic baffled reactor or what is commonly known as the ABR. In this lecture we will be describing uh, the system, we will see how it works as well as the design considerations and we will take a uh, solved and practical example about designing an ABR. Let's start by understanding the concept of an ABR. So the anaerobic baffled reactor is considered as an improved septic tank. So this is actually a primary treatment system usually used for small to medium scale projects and is mainly considered as a, a decentralized uh, wastewater treatment system. It consists of a septic tank, of a normal septic tank so you can design uh, this part using the uh, design considerations of a septic tank. Then we have many vertical compartments. So this is actually the ABR. We have a series of vertical baffles in which the water is uh, flowing. And this will actually ensure a, a better performance uh, compared to a septic tank. We have a 30 to 50 uh, percent uh, more removal of BOD, for example, and also we have a high reduction of total suspended solids. This is why an ABR system uh, is ideal if you are using a, a wetland in the secondary uh, treatment because it will highly reduce the total suspended solids and this will protect the wetland from uh, any clogging and uh, failure. For the material, you can use uh, the concrete, reinforced concrete, or even uh, masonry. You can use also fiberglass or prefabricated uh, systems, and even you can use uh, PVC as a material. Now note that uh, this system is highly modular. So we can add other buffers if, for example, we have a, a higher uh, flow entering the system or a higher load. Now let's understand a little bit uh, how the system works in terms of uh, treatment. So as we have already said, we have a settler, we have a septic tank uh, at uh, the inlet of the ABR. It can consist of uh, two uh, chambers, so the traditional septic tank or uh, one chamber. Of course, if you choose to use two chambers, you will have an enhanced uh, treatment. In this settler, we will have the removal of the uh, settleable particles, so the particles that can settle down by gravity, or even uh, the fog, FOG, fat, oil, and grease, so the particles that can float actually, and they will form the scum layer. Then the water will be transferred through these long pipes, uh, as you can see in this picture, into the ABR system. So actually, this is the ABR in this case. And the wastewater will enter at the bottom of the tank. Why? So it has a contact with the settled sludge. In each compartment, of course, we will have some uh, particles that will settle down and they will form this sludge that is an anaerobic sludge. We are in anaerobic conditions. There is no mechanical equipment. There is no blowers. And this sludge actually will be able to digest the organic content of the wastewater. Digest, it means that uh, it will, between uh, brackets, it will eat the organic contents and this will highly lower the BOD as well uh, as the COD. This process will actually happen through a series of uh, baffles. So the same will happen in uh, each compartment as the water flows. So the ABR is a high rate anaerobic digester, as I have already said. There is no blowers, no mechanical equipment. The wastewater will enter the chambers at the bottom and needs to have a contact with the sludge, and then it will move up 
to the next compartment. To equally distribute the entering liquid in the chambers, they should be designed as short compartments. So the length of each compartment, so this is the length actually, it must be less than 75 centimeters. Having many compartments will actually uh, ensure a better solids retention and we will have a development of a, a thick sludge layer in each compartment and as the wastewater is flowing it will pass through this sludge blanket and this contact will actually uh, improve the removal of organic materials. An APR is uh, used for small to medium scale projects, so for a flow range of 2 to uh, 200 cubic meters per day, we have a high removal of organic uh, matters like the COD, uh, a removal between 65 to 90 percent, which is a very good performance, also a high reduction of BOD 70 to 95 percent, a high reduction of total suspended solids. And as I have already said, an ABR is ideal if you are uh, using a, a constructed wetland as a secondary treatment. We have up to 90% removal of total suspended solids. Pathogen reduction is low, obviously. You need a tertiary treatment. We need a disinfection, whether through chlorination or a UV. And it is usually followed by a constructed wetland, as I have already said. Let's check the, the advantages and the disadvantages of an anaerobic baffled reactor. An ABR does not require energy. And this is very important if you are using this a technology in a, a refugee context, for example, as a DWATS, or simply uh, for your home if you want to improve uh, the performance of your septic tank. It has low operating uh, costs, long service life, high reduction of uh, BOD, also very important feature, low sludge production, and the sludge that is being produced is stabilized. And also it is very simple uh, to operate. There is no complexity, no mechanical equipment. The main disadvantages, it requires expert design and construction. It requires long startup phase due to slow growing anaerobic biomass. So like any anaerobic system, we have to wait until we have enough uh, sludge formation within the baffles. So we have uh, an enhanced uh, removal rate within our system. And also we have a low reduction of pathogens and uh, nutrients. As we have already said, we need a tertiary treatment. Now let's move to the design considerations. Uh, first of all, we have to design the settler based on uh, a septic tank uh, design considerations. Concerning the ABR, so uh, these are the baffles. You have to choose four uh, to six baffles. For the compartment width, to length ratio, we will denote this as small r, uh, it is usually taken between 3 to 4. The water depth, small d, it is between 1 to 3 meters, and this is the water depth. And when designing, do not forget to add the freeboard uh, depth, which is usually uh, around uh, 30, 20 to 30 centimeters. The HRT, the hydraulic retention time within all the baffles is between 24 to 48 hours. So uh, the water has to stay within these baffles for a, a total of 24 to, eight, to 48 hours. To design the digester width, you have to use this formula. W is equal to square root of V, the volume, R, the width to length ratio and the number of compartments and D, the depth of the water. This is what uh, an ABR looks like. We have a top view and a, a sectional view. Uh, we have a settler, as I have already said, this is a septic tank. And notice for the top view of the ABR, we have many uh, vertical pipes. So as you can see here, we have vertical pipes put in series, so this is the section view of the vertical pipe. They are placed in series and the uh, space spacing between these pipes 
is uh, 25 to 45 uh, centimeters. In each compartment, we have the same configuration of pipes that have also a, a T-shaped uh, at their uh, upper part. For the maintenance, it is pretty much similar to a septic tank. Uh, you need to always check the scum and sludge levels to ensure that the tank is well functioning. The maintenance is limited to the removal of the accumulated sludge and scum. Usually uh, this is done every one to three years. And the desludging frequency depends on the chosen pretreatment steps as well as on the design of the ABR. A very important note that when emptying the tanks, it is very important and crucial to leave some active sludge in each compartment. Do not remove all the sludge because this is the bulk actually of uh, the treatment. Otherwise, this will highly affect the removal rates and you will have to wait another uh, six to seven months so that the sludge uh, layer uh, reaccumulates for optimal performance. Now let's take a practical example. We have to design an ABR system for a flow of five cubic meters per day. So this is a, a pretty small flow for a small scale uh, uh, treatment plant. First of all, we have to find the ABR volume. We have to assume uh, a, a hydraulic retention time of 48 hours. As we have already said, it could be between 24 to 48. 48 hours correspond to two days. We can now find the volume. The volume is equal to the flow times the hydraulic retention time. Always be consistent with the units. So five meter cubes per day. So meter cubes per day times the hydraulic retention time in days, so times d. We can cancel out the days. We will have a, an answer in meter cubed. The answer is 10 cubic meters. This is the total volume of all the vertical baffles. Now we will consider the number of compartments. We chose four compartments, the water depth we chose it as 1.5 meters. Also, we will consider a compartment width to length ratio R as 3.5. We can compute the digester width using the formula that we have already covered. So square root of V times R divided by N times D. You have to be consistent with the units. So W, it is equal to 10, which is the volume times R 3.5 based on our assumptions, divided by 4, the number of compartments, times D, the water depth. So we got a width of 2.4 meters. This is the width of our tank. So we found the width as 2.4 meters. Now it is time to find the length of each compartment using uh, a simple math um, formula. So L it is equal to the volume over the water depth times the width. So this is actually the area. So the volume over the area, we will be able to get the uh, length of the ABR. We are getting here the total length. So we are getting the length of all the compartments. So L is equal to 10 divided by 1.5, the water depth times the width that we have already found, 2.4, we will get a length of uh, 2.8 meters. I am rounding up uh, all the numbers for construction easiness. So this is the total length. And to get the length of each compartment, we will divide it by uh, the uh, total number of compartments, which is four. So the length of each compartment is point seven meters. This is a 3D shape of uh, what an ABR system looks like. So we have the settler. This is the inlet, the water inlet. We might have a, a screen before the settler. These are the ABR compartments. We have the vent pipe, of course, to evacuate the gases. We have also manholes uh, for each compartment uh, for any maintenance works. And then the water will flow into the secondary treatment after being treated in the ABR system.
For more information about wastewater, you can check these lectures. And please do not forget to like and subscribe for support.